When it comes to gold, this is definitely a case of do as I say, and not as I do. Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. If you are new here, my name is Beth, and today I am setting up May in my work or business bullet journal. If you saw my work versus personal journal video, then you know I am moving towards making my work journal a little more simple, or at least I thought I was gonna make it a little more simple. For this setup, I am keeping it fairly monochromatic with black and gray and some gold. More on that gold later, but I am continuing with my celebration of fantasy and science fiction films and television shows. This month's theme is Star Trek, specifically the catchphrases of Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek Next Generation. And Captain Picard's greatest small pleasure is tea, Earl Grey. Hot. So here I am using a Pigma Micron in a .05 just to outline all of my sketch work with the Star Trek insignia and a teapot pouring some tea. And now that that is all sketched out, let's talk about the gold. So I picked up these Sakura Pen Touch metallic pens and I tested this gold pen, my friends. I tested this gold pen in the back of another Archer and Olive journal with the same weight paper. I tested it both in cursive, print, as well as coloring in large areas. And not one time during those tests did I have shadowing or bleed through. And yet here we are in the actual setup and it is starting to give me fits. I love how fine the tip is for writing, so I'm switching from coloring in that insignia really quickly and just writing in my mini calendar to see how that performs. And it performs just as all of my tests did and did not bleed through at all. But stubborn individual that I am, I do come back to that insignia and proceed to attempt coloring it in again. I will definitely link the Secura Pen Touch Gold Metallic Pen with the rest of my supplies in the description box below. If you have used this pen and had much better luck in coloring in large areas without the shadowing or the bleed through, please let me know. I have discovered through this process that I do tend to be a little more heavy handed than I thought, and I think that that could be part of the problem. Um, but just let me know if you've used it before, buy one for yourself, try it and see if it works. I can guarantee you I will pick up another one of these because I do like the way that it writes if I am just printing or using cursive. Speaking of being heavy handed, I do have a couple of blobs of paint that come out here during this process and you get to see me just sort of expand my drawing in order to make up for that error right there is the second one um, and I'm just going to expand that line of T coming into the tea cup and there we go it's all fixed and ready to go obviously getting a little heavy-handed caused additional bleed through there and i will deal with that later but at the time i am now gathering my gouache gold paint supplies so that i can replace that pen with this gouache paint when working with metallics or white gel pens, I do keep this black post-it note handy just to kind of test and get my pens started. I picked those up on Amazon and I will include them with my supply list below. But now it is time to add some contrast on the page. So I'm coloring in the Star Trek insignia with a black Tombow dual brush pen. Um, it is definitely my go-to brush pen for coloring in um, the first colors typically leaves things a little bit streaky and then the second color if you go the opposite direction almost fills it in to the point where you can't tell that that was a marker. Of course I have now smeared gold paint in the top right hand of the journal. I have also smeared gold paint to the right side of my journal on my work surface but we are just going to keep on keeping on. On hand, I do have a white acrylograph paint pen from Archer and Olive. It is my new go-to pen for fixing larger mistakes. I still reach for the white gel pen to fix smaller mistakes, um, but I do use that acrylograph here in a moment, and you can buy those individually now, so I'll make sure and link Archer and Olive's website below. 
a little bit of gold highlight on the black letters for May and we are going to move on to my calendar. I do prefer a linear calendar. This month though I have gone with a diagonal one um, and here I have replaced that pen touch gold paint pen with my trusty Uniball gold gel pen and I am writing the days of the month along with the day of the week den in that diagonal and I do that first because it's easier to come along and then color that with a dual tip brush pen and the Tombow marker will just separate around the gold and leave the lettering behind clear as day. On the left side I am using Captain Picard's catchphrase of T Earl Grey Hot. Um, with a capital angled science fiction sort of font that I use throughout the setup. Um, it doesn't have any specific rhyme or reason. But here I am coloring in that diagonal of the calendar and as you can see as that black Tombow settles in, that gold gel pen comes through crystal clear and you can see the dates. I will put my appointments on the bottom half of that angled calendar and I will put my events on the top half of that angled calendar. Um, and here you see I have switched over to the gold gouache. One of the reasons this gold gouache is not my favorite is because it is much more of an orange gold as opposed to a greener tinged gold or a yellow yellow gold. Um, but it definitely gets the job done. I'll need to put a second coat on it here in a minute. And there I have written in on a random Wednesday two meetings that I have, two appointments, just to show that that's how that calendar is going to work for you. It's time to get that second coat of paint on the Earl Grey and then I will outline the Earl Grey with black as well just to make sure that it pops. And then on my May header as well as the words tea and hot I do come along with a little bit of a gold gel pen on the right side of each letter and the bottom of each letter just to give it a little bit of a drop shadow. It doesn't show up very well on camera but it definitely shows up when you see the journal in person. Once those finishing touches are in place, we will move on to the next page, which is what I call my work stress tracker. This month I have devoted an entire spread to this work stress tracker, mainly so I could get a large art element on here and I am putting in a split gold and white version of the ship, the USS Enterprise. To keep the edges of the pages nice and clean while painting right on the edge, I do use a little bit of scrap paper. In this case, it was a page I had been testing on from an Archer and Olive notepad and it is the craft paper. I don't use the craft paper very much in my journaling, um, so it comes in handy when I'm checking out and testing other things. As you can see, I am keeping the angled theme going throughout. I have some of those sharp angles in my font as well as, of course, the diagonal calendar. And then here, I just divided the USS Enterprise on an angle and alternated the colors. Again, this gold gouache will need a second coat, so I am going to flip my journal around where I don't run my hand through the paint and outline my header for this page, which is Captain Picard's catchphrase of make it so. And then the gouache does dry quickly enough that I can go ahead and come back and get that second coat put on here. This particular gouache paint is the Artist's Loft from Michaels. I picked up my entire set for about $10. Um, I don't do a whole lot of painting and I wasn't prepared to fully invest in a great set of paints when I was just beginning to dabble in the process. Um, I have enjoyed all of the paints in that particular set with the exception of what the color of this gold is. Um, it looks great on camera but it's just not my favorite color as I have mentioned before. Once that is fully opaque and gold, it is time to color in my header with the black and then set up the bar graph for this particular chart. I do set this up every month, but what this chart does for me is that I am an event manager with a lot of different shifts. So I work from home on occasion now because of the pandemic. 
there are times that I am a manager on duty for an event that is taking place and we have managed to have some of those that are socially distanced and safe and then I have my office days so between those three shifts I track on this bar graph those particular shifts and then I will add a colored line on a scale of 1 to 10 on what my stress was on any given day during one of those shifts just to see what's more stressful for me. In this particular setup the days of the month are down the left hand side and then the hours from 5 a.m. all the way around to 1 a.m. are across the bottom. So let me flip back to a completed one. This is January and show you how this looks when it is filled in. In this particular example, the days of the month are on the right hand side and the hours of day are at the top and as you see from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. I have a gray highlight and that is my 1 to 10 scale for my stress levels which you can see in that minty color going across the bar graph of what my actual work shift were for each day. January was the first month that I set this up for myself and it has been so handy to look back on um, that I have repeated it every single month and it's definitely been something that will stick around in my bullet journal for quite some time. This is a great chart for anyone who has a lot of swing shifts or works a very varied schedule like I do. Um, so let me know if you want a complete video on just that one particular chart and I can definitely make that happen for you. But for now we are going to get back to putting the finishing touches on that page for May. After putting the gold drop shadow on my header I did decide that the USS Enterprise definitely needed some contrast to it so I am just outlining all of my lines with again that same 0.05 pigma micron to make that stand out a little bit more. This next spread is a singular spread for this May setup. Once I cram in June into this journal, and it's going to be very tough for me to do so, I will be migrating into a new bullet journal. And so this is my migration spread. We started off this year, of course, with the pandemic still going on, with events still being very small and not a lot of them taking place. That has changed and how I use my bullet journal and how many pages I'm using in my bullet journal is changing dramatically. So I need to do a pretty heavy look through of what works for me and what doesn't work for me in my work journal. So I am putting in four columns for in, things I'm going to keep, out, things that are definitely going to go, new, things that I want to add to my bullet journal, and adjust things that I like but they definitely need to be tweaked in some way and there is an infamous episode of Star Trek Next Generation called Chain of Command where Captain Picard is taken hostage and tortured I won't go into all of the details or give away the plot but in that he ends up shouting at the end for his captors and the torture methods that they put him through there are four lights and because that is such a catchphrase for him in that particular episode and I had four categories I thought it would be perfect to use on this page. I will be sharing that migration process with you so stay tuned for future videos to see that particular setup and how that works. But for now I am setting up my first weekly for the month of May. I used to use four pages for each one of my weeklies for my work journal because I needed that much space. The pandemic changed that for me, obviously, um, and I went to a two-page spread uh, two months ago, I guess, um, but now things are beginning to pick back up where that extra page is not going to be a waste, but I am also trying to get this journal to go all the way through June. So on this particular page, I am going to put a little bit of a surprise over my task list, my rolling task list, to give me a little bit of extra space. On this setup, I have my goals and mailing calendar on the left along with a day for each day of the week. And on the right side, I have my rolling task list as well as a spot for me to put my events for the week down the right side. 
But what I've discovered is I need space for some specific action steps. And I picked up this little trick from Julia Royal and I will link her channel in the description box below because when I saw it, I thought, oh, of course. So as an event manager, there's some very specific steps I need to do, including contracting upcoming events, scripting in their agenda, drawing their diagrams. Um, and then I find that I'm always also waiting on people for things. So I wanted a waiting section. So I created this little flap that can extend my rolling task list all the way down to the bottom of the page. But then when I flip up the flap, I have those additional spaces where I can put in those specific tasks um, in a list form. And I finished it off with a little Star Trek quote at there at the bottom that says, it is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not weakness, that is life. And you will probably see this trick a couple of more times before I switch journals, um, because again, I am stretching my pages to get through the end of June. And then I will probably go back to having a single bullet journal per quarter. Normally my bullet journals with full business only last me three months. Okay, then let us flip back to the beginning and go through this flip through of May. If you have made it this far, thank you so much for coming along on my gold shenanigan journey for this month. Uh, if you found any information helpful or if you learned from my mistakes, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you join my little corner of YouTube. You can also find me on Instagram at dots and beyond as well as online at dotsandbeyond.com. And of course, you can always find me here on YouTube where a new video is going up every Friday. Next month will probably be the end of my science fiction series for 2021 um, as I work to simplify things a little bit in my work bullet journal and make it more functional. There are definitely some big changes coming for this particular journal. So that is it for May 2021. I will see you guys next Friday. And in the meantime, here are a couple other videos I think you might enjoy.